Hey there! In this video, we're going to talk about active users in GA4. And the more I use the latest version of Google Analytics, the more I think that the head of product, whenever was asked, how are we going to go about this or what are we going to do about that, he uh, replied in the style of a legendary Red Butler in Gone with the Wind. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Now, why did I make this maybe silly joke? Well, basically, if you look at the active users definition in official Google Docs, it says that now active users are the primary user metric in GA4. Previously, a primary user metric was total users. So basically, any browser device pair that hit your Google Analytics property was added to the count of total users who visited your website. And now Google enhanced this metric by saying that only those who had an engaged session, and here comes the somewhat dubious part, or when analytics collects the first visit event or the first open for applications. Now, if we take a look at this article that we're going to link to in the video description, there was quite a positive hype from the expert community about the new engagement metrics. So you can read here what Krista Seiden had to say or Florian Pro, but engaged session is only counted as such after the user has been on site for 10 seconds. I'm quoting Krista now here. Why did Google Analytics add all those first time visitors in the same bucket as those who are engaged because the data gets really skewed and basically you don't understand whether this visitor is real or just a spam or a bot or any other uh, source out there that can pollute your engaged users. To better understand this concept, let's go into the segment overlap report that I created. And basically I created two segments. First one is users with engaged sessions. And the second one is first time visitors. Now, if you take a look at here, you see that these two sets overlap heavily. And this is how I created those. So users with engaged sessions are basically anyone who had user engagement event during the session. Here you can see that it's almost 80% of the visitors on the DDU site. But when you go into first time visitors, they had the first visit event logged during their session. And there are more than 95% of all the users on the website that fall into this bucket. It's interesting to understand that if you wanted to uh, make use of uh, user engagement as a event to identify your audience, you wouldn't be able to find it here. The only way that you can do that is to basically select recently active users here, and then this event is pre-populated here by default. Now, as I already said, there are almost 80% of the users that had user engagement during the sessions. But the interesting part is here, if you wanted to further down the granularity of this audience, you can say, okay, I want users who actually had more than one user engagement event. Now you can see that this dropped all the way down to 15%. Or you can say it's enough to have just one user engagement, but let's focus only on people who had that, I don't know, during last seven days. Okay, now it says just about 20% of all the users had one user engagement during the last seven day period. Now, I want you to play with these and understand for yourself. And what's very important, not to rely on the active users in GA4, because for some reason, they bundled together people who were actually engaged with those who just created the first visit event during their session. Now, if you look at the next uh, exploration report that I created, you will also see some, you know, awkwardness because we had 54,915 active users during the last 30 days, 
let's see in the segment overlap 54 823 so yeah these numbers are right but if you look at the number of engaged sessions it says that there were 42,283 so basically there were less engaged sessions overall during this period than active users now it doesn't make sense to have less engaged sessions when you compare them to the number of active users unless basically Google frankly didn't give a damn and put together engaged users with those who created their first visit because you see that the first visit count probably makes up for the majority of all the active users up to 54,000. Now, oh, okay, you probably received a similar uh, e email from Google and I highly recommend that you opt out of this possibility. How do you do that? Well, you go into the universal property and then go into GA4 helper in the admin section and say, no, Google, I don't want this because users who are aware of this change coming, they already created GA4 account. Uh, users who are not aware of this change, they're probably not savvy enough to make use of the procedure that follows when you basically choose to get started with creation of Google Analytics 4 property because it makes you implement the tag yourself either via Google Tag Manager or by hard coding on your website or using some plugin if you have a content management system. Now, I want to talk about 10 second threshold that's applied by default that separates those who are engaged users versus the ones who are not. And that setting can be changed here, although you cannot uh, put any number that you want, but you basically can choose from the drop down that Google offers, and it's all the way down here, adjust session timeout. You see how it says that adjust timer for engaged sessions, session becomes an engaged if it lasts longer than a certain amount of time. The default threshold for an engagement time is 10 seconds, but can be adjusted here. Unfortunately, you cannot put it less than 10 seconds, but then again, depending on the type of content that you offer, you can extend this to, I don't know, 30 or 60 seconds or whatever fits your needs the best. For the end of this video, I want to bring to your attention another bug that I noticed during preparation for this video. The problem with this report is, as we already saw, that these two sets overlap. Google Analytics 4 is mistakenly adding up these two numbers and saying that the total event count is 19,000 and even counting the percentage that each of these segments take up out of this entire 100% or 19,000 of the events. Now, if we remove those two segments, we will see that the total event count is 11,546, which is nowhere near 19,000. So be careful when you uh, compare segments in reports like this because total column is uh, completely off and doesn't give you clear perspective on the data. Quite contrary, it uh, misleads you to believe that there were more events than there actually were. I hope that you liked this video, that you find useful my explanation about how engaged users are way more interesting for both analytics and uh, advertising people and uh, if you did like it please click the like button and subscribe to our channel and i hope to see you soon in a uh, next topic bye